Okay, welcome to my first attempt at using a stencil with Stampscape Stamps. I don't know if I've used a stencil before, and if I did, I don't remember it. Okay, this is a Sweet Poppy stencil. They've been carrying Stampscape Stamps, and I've been inspired by a lot of uh, the Eileen Godwin pieces over this last... I don't know, It's it's been over a year, maybe it's been two years at this point in time. Time flies so much, so... I was inspired, and I just couldn't stand it any longer. I had to get some of these and uh, contacted them. They sent some out for me to experiment with. And um, this is the first time I have used one. I'm guessing... I just watched one kind of video of uh, usage um, today. Uh, I didn't know what I was doing here but I did notice that you are supposed to tape down. <laughs> so we're talking remedial stenciling here, okay? But uh, maybe using it, I figured on this rainbow holographic foil cardstock might be interesting, and that was um, something that I was envisioning when I was seeing some of the pieces that uh, I've been referencing and looking at, and... Uh, I thought, I wonder if it's been done on foil before, so I thought I'd give it a shot here. It probably has, you know, I mean, foil's been out there a very long time, but I wasn't sure. So I'm using Brilliant's um, water-based, fast-drying pigment ink here, okay? I thought about doing this in Stazon, but I thought there's no way I would ever get that applied on here, because um, Stazon is just going to dry too fast. This ink right here does not dry fast, but you can heat set it. It doesn't stick, so I'm going to have to use um, a Krylon um, spray sealant, or just you, you can use whatever um, acrylic spray sealant you have to seal this type of ink down. Now, again, I'm just using this ink because I knew it would dry on this type of cardstock here. All right, but like a, you know, it even when dry, it'll wipe off, so you do have to spray seal. Okay, so removing, I don't think I've ever used painter's tape on any card before, so I was thinking, oh my god, I hope it doesn't leave a residue. So I'm talking about, you know, I didn't know, like, anything as far as the usage of this goes. I did know that I wanted it a little bit irregular, you know, in terms of the application of ink on there, and I did want to go for that, um, kind of that recessed looking area, in the center there, I saw Eileen do that on one of her pieces, or on, maybe on several of them, where she's kind of gone and uh, did um, uh, varying applications of tone in the stencil design itself and in that center area. And I thought, oh, that looks so cool. So that was one of the things I wanted to try in here. Stamping out the uh, Cabin 140E Stampscape stamp. Now, I am stamping this imagery and... The cloud with moon that I'm going to stamp over the top of this cabin in stays on ink. Okay, I figure in stays on that's just one less area that I'm going to have to worry about um, in terms of spray sealing. Stays on will just dry and adhere to this type of surface with no problem. And okay, now in this round format here, I always thought, oh my god, that little center area would be perfect for a full moon um, image because you have that repetition of form in terms of the circles within um, the design itself and the formatting of the circle. So this is something that I've wanted to play around with. I'm always talking about kind of breaking the... Um, breaking out of the format of a, a rectangular square card type of thing, you know, which most of us are working in most of the time. Now this I am working in a square, but the dominant form is really that um, stencil there, the circle. Okay. All right, now I've colored in with a um, white acrylic paint pen, that moon, okay? It's hard to see because when it's flat, you know, you have all that kind of glare coming off of there, but when you hold it up like that, it does look like a full moon like that, okay? So now I'm going to have to do the same thing on the top of that roof there. And I go with two sheets of paper, typically, for a rooftop. I don't go for four sheets, okay? Um, because I want my lighting on top of the roof to be varied, okay? So you only need to mask off two sides. No need to cut anything out. Just use a couple pieces of paper like this. And this is what I always do for any type of rooftop lighting, okay? All right, so you take a... Um, 
cotton ball and you apply some Brilliance um, white ink on it. Maybe you can use another type of ink, but just as long as you um, heat set it, maybe on this type of foil, I'm not sure. Um, like if you can't get a hold of some Brilliance white. All right, but see that you can't really see it, but then when you hold it up at the light, you know, in uh, away from the light, it you know it really shows um, that illumination that we've applied there. So see that right there that you have the moon kind of reflecting moonlight reflecting off of the rooftop. Okay, now I've applied lighting, so I thought I'd take this um, alcohol pen. It's kind of a medium gray, and I would add in some tone. But the thing about alcohol inks, you have to be careful about alcohol dissolving your um, solvent-based ink, okay? So I didn't apply too much of that. All right, now I'm going in with some white, bringing in that white element into the design, uh, the deco decorative elements of the stencil here, okay? And that's to bring continuity to the interior there. It gives, um, I'm kind of doing these little dots like this. And again, it's the repetition of form, so there's um, really small little dots of white, and then you have the one really large one in the form of the moon, okay? So they're all kind of little, little circles or orbs like that. And again, I know this is kind of hard to see because um, the reflective nature of the foil, but when I hold this up, I'll be able to see um, more of these little, I don't know, kind of decorative um, textures that I'm applying with this white pen. And uh, acrylic white paint pens are really designed to be able to draw on just about any surface out there. You can use it on glass if you want to, and it will dry um, with no problem on that type of surface. Okay, now this pen right here is a little bit more of a, like a warm um, white I, I guess you can call it beige or something like that. But I thought, eh, let's give that interior lighting for the cabin, you know, because it's supposed to represent something at night. We'll give it a little bit of a warmer interior here. But I didn't want to go with complete yellow. I guess I could. I guess it would match that foil that I'm going to use down below. But look at that. It almost looks like day and night when you hold it up like that against the light. It didn't really work like that too much after I paired it with the bottom portion of the gold foil to act like a little reflector because you had so much of that lighting coming off the gold foil reflecting back up into that um, rainbow holographic area. But look at that, though. Isn't that fun? Kind of using that mirrored type of reflection. Look at that. That mirrored type of reflection, it's really interesting because it's like illuminating that center area, you know, in the middle of the um, template. But doesn't that look like that area is recessed now like that? I don't know if it's especially looks kind of illusionistic like that with that extra kind of glare of that warm light showing up there or not. But um, I don't know. I thought it was a pretty cool effect and something that I didn't really anticipate. Okay, so adding some foreground elements down here with um, stays on ink. This is the pines and rocks um, image. Now, I mean... Usually when I do these mirror cards, this area down below represents water, you know, where you have the top scene kind of reflecting in that lower area. I don't know, with the template, I don't know, that template just kind of becomes a design element, you know, kind of more decorative than, I don't know, um, something representing actual water. But I thought it looks pretty cool. It's almost, it's not abstract or something like that, but I don't know, it's... Um, I don't know, it, it, like I said, it's it's playing with, um, oh, I get, like I said, dimension. These are all 2D, you know, two-dimensional surfaces that we're working on. I'm not doing really anything that's actually three-dimensional, but that's the illusion that I want to give this piece. But that kind of recessed area was a surprise. Okay, now I have this um, moonlight kind of, I wanted it to be breaking out of the format here, you know, that template. So it's kind of coming from within the middle of that circle and reflecting or shining outside of that template. That that was my idea there. I don't know if it, how effective it was because you can't really see those beams too well, but that was the, the concept. And, you know, 
I thought I'd try all of the concepts that were coming to mind um, in the spirit of, I don't know, whatever, exploration and creativity, whatnot. I don't know if it was done in the spirit of um, achievement in, you know, getting that done or not, but I thought it looked pretty cool anyway. Okay, now, after I apply those beams, they're kind of real sharp and angled and everything like that, so what I'm doing here with some extra pigment ink on my cotton ball is I'm going in and just kind of softening up that uh, those beams in there, those harsh beams, okay, with some extra, you know, it's extra illumination. It represents um, kind of fog. See, look at that. You can really see it when you hold it up like that, where that white pigment ink has been applied. It's almost like a daytime scene here. I mean, not really with that moon, but it almost looks like that in terms of the lighting in there. But then when you hold it up like that, it looks more like night. So you can do like a day-night type of dynamic with this reflective foil, I guess. All right, so that's what that looks like right there. Pairing it up. Like I said, I'm kind of losing some of that nighttime type of effect just because we have so much lighting being reflected back up into that. It's kind of interesting because that rainbow f holographic is probably reflecting down below because you can see all the colors, but then you have that warmth reflecting back up into the top portion of the card. Okay, going for so a little bit of extra texture. This is some Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White. And we're applying it down over the entire card. So maybe it's snow, maybe it's another layer of texture or something like that. Maybe it's in front of the template image, I don't know. I just wanted to keep layering. Yeah, you can't really see that white too well. If I hold it up like that at an angle where it's a little bit darker, where there's more contrast between the white splatter painting and the background, it shows up a lot more. And it's kind of good that it kind of disappears too. All right, so um, one of the things that I removed from this sped up version, I didn't show the um, heat setting with the heat gun, but you just kind of run your heat gun over it and just try not to hold it in one area for too long on the foil because it is foil and it could make it curl, which inevitably happens. But when we format it and glue it down to this mere card, um, cardstock back in it, it pretty much flattens out. But anyways, that is the stamping portion of it. And let's see, I do have one more quote stamp to go here. I love the look of this quote stamp and it was kind of in the square format. I thought the quote matched reasonably enough with the um, scenery up top there. I stamped that white in a Stazon white pigment ink, so I didn't have to heat set it or anything like that, and it dried almost instantly. But there you have that floating text on that, and look how great that looks against that reflected area. Down below, when, it, when it's not reflecting so much light, you can see that um, quote in there a little bit more. But anyways, that is the card. That's my mirror card using uh, Sweet Poppy stencils, and the first time I have ever used a stencil uh, that I can remember. Okay, thanks so much for watching.